Okay. So this information about this little field trip to the pipe is kind of interesting. Okay. But now we need to talk about the concept of stability. Remember we had a powerful vocabulary word early in the course called convection. Convection was about moving air vertically. That was in contrast to advection, which was about moving air horizontally. A convection was about vertical motions. And actually in meteorology, convection has become a word that's almost synonymous with thunderstorms. Because thunderstorms are a big updraft. Remember when we talked about clouds? Cumulonimbus clouds are a giant vertical rising motion. They're rising from near the surface of the Earth all the way to the tropopause, maybe 9 kilometers up, 11 kilometers up maybe. So thunderstorms are a good example of convection. As are, for example, the clouds that we see along an ordinary cold front, or the puffy little clouds that look like bunny rabbits that are outside. They're all examples of convection. They are always produced by rising motion, and the clear areas around them are always produced by sinking motion. That is an example of convection. But really, we have two types of convection. We have what we call forced convection, and we have free convection. Forced convection is convection that happens because something was forcing it to happen, like a mountain. The air had no real choice in the mountain problem but go up the mountain, right? And once it got to the top of the mountain, we just made the assumption that it would come back down the mountain. We didn't say, and then it stays at that level, or it keeps rising. We said, it's going to go up the mountain, we're forcing it up the mountain, we're forcing it down the mountain. When we talked about a cold front, and we talked about the air rising along a cold front, and how the warm air was being plowed out of the way by the leading edge of the cold front, we said that that was forced convection. The cold front didn't, I mean, the air didn't have a choice. It had to rise. Mechanically, there was something pushing that air out of the way. The alternative to that is free convection. And free convection happens all on its own. It happens because of buoyancy. When an air parcel gets to be a different temperature than the air around it, it will either have positive or negative buoyancy. If we left an air parcel from one layer, maybe from the surface to someplace in the atmosphere, the air parcel's temperature has changed according to like the mountain problem, right? We'll have used the dry adiabatic lapse rate and or the moist adiabatic lapse rate as appropriate, but it has a different temperature now. But we can compare that to the temperature of the air around it, to the air in the environment around the air parcel. When we use the word environment in meteorology, by the way, we don't mean as in bunnies and whales. We mean surroundings. Okay? So when we lift this air parcel from like the surface to one kilometer up, there's air around it. That's its environment. And it may or may not have the same temperature as the air around it. If it's colder than the air around it, it's going to be more dense, thanks to the ideal gas law. It'll be more dense than the air around it, and it'll want to sink back down to the surface. If the, air, uh, if the air parcel is warmer than the air around it, it will be buoyant, it'll be less dense than the air around it, and it'll want to rise. The air parcel wanting to rise is a good thing. Good thing in the sense that, like, we cheer for the storms in this class, right? We're, we're hoping for storms. It's a good thing that the air parcel wants to rise on its own. Because once it wants to rise on its own, we don't have to push it anymore. Maybe some cold front will come along and lift that air parcel a kilometer or two. But if now it's warmer than the air around it, it can rise on its own. We don't have to keep pushing it. It'll go on its own. That's free convection. We get that convection for free. We don't have to work very hard to get it. Now, a thunderstorm is a pretty damn tall thing. Eight, nine kilometers up, something like that. We don't really have any eight or nine tall, kilometer tall mountains around Omaha to force air up. We don't have any eight or nine tall, kilometer tall cold fronts. Cold fronts are like a kilometer or two tall. If we're going to get a thunderstorm in Omaha, it's going to have to be this way. We're going to have to get the rising motion because the air parcel is buoyant. It's warmer than the air around it. So 
So we're going to be trying to get some free convection here. Free convection is related to this idea of stability. But in order to talk about stability, we need to talk about the general idea of stability first. Let's say I've got this chair. And I want to set this chair up on this table. There are a number of ways I could do it. I could put this chair on a table where one of its legs is actually off the table, and two of its legs are just sitting there right on the very, very edge of the table. And if I just left that, table, that chair there, and we didn't bump it, and we didn't push it, and we didn't, you know, whatever, this table, this chair would still be sitting here on the edge of this table. You should see the size of Brian's eyes right now. He's so scared this chair's going <laughs> to This chair would still be here when the sun burns out, right? I mean, if we just left it there, it's, it's in a... It's in an equilibrium. It's not going anywhere. On the other hand, I think we would all agree that this is not a wise way to stack a chair on top of a table because it is unstable. Pretty much any little disturbance that comes along is going to make a big noise, right? It's going to fall. I mean, if I just sort of bump the chair, which never ever works the first time I try to do it, if I just sort of bump the table a little bit, I have actually broken like five chairs over the years doing this, by the way. Um, I don't know how it happened. Uh, <laughs> your tuition dollar at work. A relatively little nudge to the table made a big difference, right? That wasn't a very stable way to stack that, right? On the other hand, a smarter, more stable way to stack the chair would have been to put it down like this, maybe, with it low uh, and set, our, set on the middle of the table. Heck, I can do all kinds of things to this chair table now, and it's not going to fall, right? This is a very stable way. Even big changes. <laughs> don't make it don't make it accelerate to a new state. A new state as in it's sitting there on the floor. Kyle has a roommate who's horribly unstable. Every little thing sets him off. It's just a tiny I don't know you this Um every little thing, it's just a tiny thing, and yet it makes a big deal. Brian has a roommate though who's very stable. Even when big things happen, he's got five tests and his car burned up and his girlfriend left him and his favorite TV show got canceled. It's all fine. He's good. Right? Unstable means little things make big differences. Stable means even big things don't make a big difference. Don't, make a, don't even make a little difference. Right? If we are going to want to get thunderstorms, we want little pushes on this air. We want to get air down here at the surface with all kinds of little reasons why it might rise. Oh, it's going to go over the hill. Oh, it's a weak cold front just coming through, and it's going to make it rise a little bit. We want that little disturbance to grow into a big updraft. The updraft of a cumulonimbus cloud, a thunderstorm. Because if the air is stable, even something coming through that's a big deal, like air flowing over a big mountain, or air being forced to rise over a big front, isn't going to be enough to get that air parcel to rise on its own. It'll just go back to where it was before. In the same way the chair went back where it was before when I gave it a pretty big push, right? I mean, even when I tipped it pretty far, the chair just goes back where it was before. That's stable. Stable means you go back the way you were before after a push. Unstable means given a push, you go off into some whole new direction. Well, the atmosphere can be stable or it can be unstable. For example, if we were on a day where the air near the surface was very warm, just a little bit, and above the ground, and we'll put numbers on this in just a little bit, and above the ground the air was cold, if we took air from the surface and made it rise a little bit, it's probably going to be warmer than the air around it. It'll be lighter than the air around it, and it'll continue to, to accelerate upward. It will be an unstable situation. On the other hand, if the day was such that like, maybe it's very cold at the surface, and there was some warmer air aloft, if we lifted this air from the surface, it'll almost certainly be colder than the air around it. And so once we stop pushing it, it'll just return back down to the surface. This is a stable situation. If we want thunder 